Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren and thank you so much for joining me today. I am a part-time reseller, uh, so I sell things online on platforms such as eBay and Poshmark as a part-time side hustle, income, whatever you want to call it. And the purpose of me making these videos was not only to be helpful to you at any stage that you are in in your reselling journey or if you're thinking about starting reselling, giving you some numbers that you can kind of roll around in your head and figure out um, you know, how you can plan and best uh, prepare for your business. Uh, but I'm also giving these numbers because this is like a documentation of me turning this into my full-time job. That is my end goal, my number one dream, and I feel like as every month passes, even if some of the months, you know, are not so hot, I know that I am making progress towards um, that full-time income and that goal. So thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm going to get right into it. Uh, so sorry that this is not uploaded again on Wednesday. Just had a crazy Wednesday. It just didn't happen. Um, so this is going to be... Um, filmed and uploaded on Thursday for you guys. So thank you for being patient with me. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, okay, so total gross sales across all platforms, all streams of my reselling income um, was $4,512.44, which is very good, very happy with that number, um, hovering right under that 5,000 mark, um, which yeah, I mean, that's great. That is great for part-time work. Um, and of course, this is my business gross. This is not my personal gross. This is not what I'm putting into my personal bank account. There are so many other things that go <laughs> into uh, this gross number or get taken out of this gross number before I can pay myself. Uh, at this point, I pay myself um, salary. I pay myself once a month. And just depending on what... Um, how the month went and what's left over um that's basically what i pay myself so anyway um let's see here so i'm going to break down the gross for you so uh i did 643 dollars sorry i was checking that i am filming i am filming my gosh you guys it is early um but anyway <laughs> i grossed 643 dollars on poshmark um and I net, after all the selling fees, $471.74. Um, I believe that that was down a little bit from last month. No, actually, that was actually up, actually. I'm confused. I'm thinking of the month prior. But um, that is about kind of average for me. For Poshmark, I typically gross anywhere from like three to to $800 and net three to, I don't even think I've hit $800 before. I'm kind of just quickly scanning my sheets, but it is consistently, you know, a small chunk of my reselling business, reselling income. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't put a ton of effort into my Poshmark closet. Um, that is my secondary platform. My main platform is eBay. So everything gets listed um, to eBay first. And then if I have the extra time or, um, you know, if the item will best suit the Poshmark platform, uh, as well as eBay, I will cross list it. Um, and so I, on average, probably sell about, um, one item a day on Poshmark if I had to break it down. Um, so it's fine for now. It's not a huge amount of money, but again, like, at this point in my reselling journey and my reselling income, um, it is a good chunk. So um, I plan to kind of reevaluate Poshmark in 2021 and decide if that is something I continue, want to continue to pursue or if I want to replace that with something else or work towards replacing that income with something else. Um, my big piece of advice here is, um, you know, try a bunch of different things um, when you're reselling. Try a bunch of different platforms, ways of selling um, you know, et cetera, and, you know, reevaluate them after, you know, six months to a year. Um, and don't just, unless it's like really bad and really toxic or really, um, really not making you any money, um, try to build up another stream before you end that one. That makes sense. And I'll talk more about what I mean about that in a second. 
Okay, so nothing for Poshmark consignment. I've talked about this a million times before. Sorry um, if you're a new viewer. <laughs> I'm just going to briefly go over it. I have done consignment um, as part of my original business model. That is something that I'm ending. It is ending next month, November. Um, these are September sales, but this month, October, is the last month that I am processing and selling those items. Um, so, yeah. Um, consignment. Hmm. I should maybe make a video about that, um, about the do's and don'ts, because I have learned a lot from that. Um, I definitely think that you can do consignment as part of your business model. Um, I would just highly recommend that you um, make sure that your fee is high enough to, to really make it worth your while. Generally, I'm going to say that that would be a minimum of 50%. So Anyway, uh, I digress. I say this every time, but I just do this just in case there are new viewers. So, okay. Um, eBay, this was my highest grossing month, my personal gross, like not consignment, um, on eBay, which was awesome. So I grossed $3,819 and 11 cents, which is great. Um, so after you take out all the fees, shipping, sales tax, all that good stuff, I am left with $2,235.82, which is great. i um, happy with those numbers. It's pretty typical. Um, uh, you'll probably notice that the gross and net, um, even though Poshmark is more fees, seems like you take more home, but you have to remember that in your eBay gross, and you need to remember this for tax time, eBay lumps everything into your gross, including sales tax and shipping. Um, so Poshmark does not do that. So um, even though the fees are less on eBay, sometimes when you see your eBay invoice or when you see the gross, you might think, oh my gosh, my fees are like 30 to 40%. That's crazy. Um, they're really not, but um, just keep that in mind too. So when you see that rolling total, there's when, if you have the app where really if you have um, the desktop version, it's going to give you a you know monthly total or a 90 day total. That 90 day total is not necessarily accurate because it's not accounting for um, sales that were canceled. It's not, and it's, um, you know, lumping that sales tax and all that other stuff in there, um, shipping. So just an FYI, um, because if you're wondering where's all my money at, you know, you really got to break things down on eBay. That's a whole nother video in and of itself. I'm sorry I'm getting off on a tangent, but um, just things that I have learned along the way that hopefully will be helpful to you guys. Um, uh, okay, eBay consignment, um, because I am almost done, um, was only a gross of $50.03. Um, my take home after all the fees and everything was only um, after paying my client was $7.80. So there is that. Okay. Um, consignment store sales. I have talked about this before. So what that means is I sell things to my local buy, sell trade stores. Um, if, uh, my buy in cost is low enough and it is things that they are looking for. Um, that is an income stream that I'm playing around with. Um, and I'd like to continue to do that because I have established a little bit of a relationship with those businesses. Um, they know me now, they know that I bring in, you know, good items, clean items. And so they, um, they get excited when I come in and maybe they buy more than some people. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that is another, uh, revenue potential for many of you out there, especially if you want to do something and don't want to deal with a platform and fees and shipping and all that stuff. Um, you can flip things locally and, it's great because I get cash on the spot. I don't have to wait for payout. Um, now I will say that I am very much looking into thread up and, um, the real, real, um, as, um, additional income streams for my business. Um, I don't know if I'm going to attempt those before the end of the year though. Um, there is a, uh, payout, drama issue going on with Red Up right now where they are really changing their prices. Um, but I think that from the research that I've seen, I've never sold on that platform before. Um, I think that, um, it still would probably be worth it for you to send things in there as again, as long as your buy-in cost is under a certain amount. 
So, um, but anyway, if you have experience with selling on ThreadUp or the Real Real, please leave comments down below. Um, I'm definitely considering the Real Real um, because I watch Jack and Ryan. I don't know if you guys watch them, but Jack Valentine. Um, Jack makes has made so many um, amazing detailed videos about selling on the Real Real, um, and I have some high end items, so this would just be for high end only um, that are not moving at the pace that I would like them to and I really just think that they need to be cast um, to a different audience so I'm considering sending those items there but yeah so considering thread up even though um, um, thread up has their issues I will tell you that much um, thread up is not I would not do that as my only <clears throat> stream of income but additional yes because mm, actually I'm gonna digress for another second sorry so when I was at the outlet um, this past weekend, which I have a haul coming up, um, I was chatting with a girl. Typically, I, I keep to myself at the bins, and not because I don't want to talk to people, but it's one of two things. First of all, I'm at work. Um, that is my work, and I am laser focused from the second I get in there to the second I leave. <laughs> and that is how I treat it. That's why I tell my friends all the time when they say, oh, let's go thrifting together. It'll be so much fun. And, and I really have to, like work at separating business from, you know, fun and pleasure or whatever, um, when I'm thrifting, uh, just for fun, because when I'm thrifting, I'm seeing it as that's my work. And, you know, again, I just am laser focused. I'm looking for those certain items. Um, that's also why I rarely find things for myself because I'm not looking for myself when I'm out uh, sourcing, I'm looking for things for my business. So, but anyway, um, there's this girl that was super nice. Um, she just started, she just struck up a conversation with me and we were just talking about the things we got and, you know, and it was nice, good conversation. And I don't know how we got into this, but she started talking about thread up and then she was like, oh, you know, and she started talking to me about the, um, the pay issues, the, the decrease, the severe, de the significant decrease in the payout. And that, that was frustrating to her. And she said that she was making three thousand dollars a week sending things in to thread up three thousand dollars you guys I was like a week are you sure you don't need a month girl <laughs> she was like no I had been making three thousand dollars a week and now it's going to be only like you know two thousand or fifteen hundred dollars and I was like Ooh, okay but anyway she's she is a full-time seller she's got um people working for her she has a staff like completely different level of business than I have, but that got the gears turning for me a little bit. And I started thinking, Hmm, well, <laughs> what if I look into selling there? So, um, that might be something that I definitely look into for the future. If again, if you haven't looked into that, I would suggest maybe starting to, I am starting to. So, um, again, leave, leave your experiences down below. I've heard so many mixed things. Um, but I feel, I feel like if my buy-in cost is low enough, um, that I would be willing to, and I have enough quantity of items to send them that it would be worth it. Because um, the reason I have stuck so much with my local consignment shops as a way to flip things is one, it's fast cash. Like I get paid out immediately. Um, it's not a ton of money and it's usually not a ton of money because I'm sending them the mall brands that I know that they want that don't sell very well for me. So, you know, my payout per item is usually like four four to ten dollars which again not a ton so um but again the trade-off is it's fast cash so anyway okay Whew. okay so again my gross for the month sorry you guys uh, sometimes when you when you inhale after you've drank some coffee it's like heartburn central Ugh, gross anyway so, okay, uh, again, my gross for the month was $4,512.14. After all the fees, actually, I'm going to go through the fees as, as a total, not individual. Um, so total fees, okay, so sales tax I paid um, or was taken out. I didn't do anything with. eBay takes care of all that stuff for you, which is great. Um, $183.62. Total platform fees, $1,556.00. And 80 cents that's a lot but you know what I don't have a brick-and-mortar store um, you know really the only reoccurring expense that you know 
comes whether or not I sell anything is my store fee, which is like, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's like 20 to $25 a month. Really reasonable. Um, shipping discounts. It's just a Poshmark thing. $38 and 16 cents. Um, consignment pay out $18 and 20 cents. And my total net sales after all the platform fees is $2,715.36, which is great. Very happy with that number. Um, but of course, like I said before, as I've said in the past, I should say, um, that is not the number that goes into my bank account. There's other factors that go into um, the actual gross or actual net, I should say, <laughs> um, of my business or personal net. Um, so inventory expenses. So I do the cash-based method of um, inventory tracking. This is something that my CPA and I have decided was the best avenue um, for my business. Personally, I cannot tell you what is going to be the best for you, but I would suggest um, looking into the cash-based method, especially if you have not started reselling yet, or this is your first calendar year, because I say that because it's hard for you to kind of switch and do a different avenue um, without lots of paperwork and craziness like that. Um, so basically what that means is whatever I buy that month, I can deduct immediately, whereas a cruel method, you have to keep track of the inventory costs and then you deduct it as it sells. So um, the cash base gives me more cash flow in my business bank account. Um, and it just makes it easier for me. So I spent $582.15 on inventory, which is average, happy with that number. Um, you know, uh, especially being under the certain, certain circumstances that we are, and I can't just only go to the outlet. Um, garage sales haven't really happened that much this year and rummage sales, which are like my heart and soul. <laughs> I have missed out on so many of those this year. Um, for me to be on my control. So I think that that is a pretty good number considering all those things. Um, in a perfect world where I can really bargain hunt, um, I could probably chop that number in half. Um, but again, it's, it is what it is. I'm at the point where it's like, you know, I am, I do have a budget that I set for myself. I really try not to go over a thousand dollars. Um, but I'm really trying to aim for that five to 600 at this point. For inventory. Okay, so other business expenses, that includes my store fee, that includes shipping supplies, that includes, um, you know, random expenses. I bought myself a new chair. That is a business expense. It actually came from Target. It's kind of like a little bit of mid-century modern vibes, um, but it was on sale, so I bought it. <laughs> um, I had been using a folding chair um, because the chair that came with my desk that I have here, which you can't see my desk, um, I got this desk for free from a neighbor. It is super cute, super kind of like distressed, like shabby looking. Um, and the chair that came with it was on its way out and then eventually it just um, was not safe to sit on anymore. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so I was using a folding chair and that was insanely uncomfortable. So I finally bought myself a chair. Um, anyway, so <laughs> that was a lot of talk about a chair, but anyway, uh, yeah, $236 and 53 cents, you know, it's a little higher than I would like it to be, but you know, we are in Q4. I was buying a lot of things like poly mailers and bubble wrap and all that craziness that is, um, expensive kind it is expensive but I'm really trying to make sure that I buy things in bulk in the biggest amount that I possibly can to save the most money and just because I don't have time to be buying small little quantities of things anymore that's just not not how I'm rolling so okay the last um category I need to talk about is returns and refunds um this is a very small percentage of my business but it does happen um, I primarily sell women's clothing, shoes and accessories, so um, returns are going to happen because not everything fits like it should. Um, all women especially know this, that sizing is really difficult to determine. Even if it, the, the size tag says it is what it is, does not mean that that's what it is. So um, I take returns. I want my customers to be happy with their purchases. Um, 
but I did have a couple partial refunds and um, I had a few more returns that I would have liked this month or this past month. Uh, so it was $102.23 chump change in comparison to what I made for the month. But you know, you just got to learn and grow from that and just try to make sure that you take accurate measurements, try to make sure that, um, you know, the customer, um, knows what they're buying before they're buying it. But at the end of the day, people are going to return things and you just got to be prepared for that. So, um, and again, it's a small percentage of my business, so it's really not, not that big of a deal. So now if your returns are start to spike, um, that might be something that you need to look into and pay attention to and see if that is something that is happening on your end versus the customer end. Okay. So that was $920 and 91 cents total for those additional business expenses. So when you subtract, um, the two seventeen two hundred two thousand dollars and thirty six cents minus $920.91, I am left with $1,794.45. So I said this before, my new goal is um, to be at a net of $2,000 a month. Of course, there's no uh, taxes and other things like that coming out of there. Um, but you guys, I was so, so close, basically $1,800, $200 away. Um, I had a really, the month overall in September was just really good, very consistent. Um, however, um, the last weekend of the month was atrocious. Like I had hardly any sales. I had probably like, I had less than $200 in sales and that's including tax and shipping. And that's not normal for me. Um, so that one bad weekend totally killed um, <laughs> that goal of mine. Um, but you know what? Um, I'm still proud of that number. Um, still great for part-time work, part-time income. This is something that I do on my own time. I make my own hours. Um, but just as a disclaimer here, um, when you work for yourself and you have flexible hours, flexible work, um, that doesn't mean that work can't get done. That doesn't mean, oh, well, I didn't do this today, so whatever. Um, you know, I just won't do it. it. It just means that that's more work later. So <laughs> I try to, I try to make sure that, you know, people know this and my family members know this, that, I mean, it's flexible, but the work still needs to get done. Hope that makes sense. Um, so sorry if you can hear, that's the other bad thing about this chair. Well, not bad, but it is kind of noisy. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, October so far. Okay. So I'm filming this and uploading this on the 15th of October. Um, the month is going okay. Um, I'm not really sure. It's not the typical, um, October that I was hoping for, but we'll see. Um, I'm really trying to push things through the rest of the year. I'm really, really, really trying to hit that $2,000 goal um, October, November, December. So, um, so that in 2021 I can, you know, hit 3000, 4000, etc. So thank you guys so much for watching today. Um, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how your sales have been. Have they been good? Um, have they been slow? Um, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification so that you don't miss any of my content as it gets uploaded, hopefully on Wednesdays, but sometimes on a Thursday. So, uh, thank you guys again, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.